Hi there, thanks for watching this video. This is Mr. Bowman, and in this video we're going to talk about permutations and combinations. So in the last video we talked about experiments, and that experiments were situations where one of a certain possible number of outcomes was going to happen at random, at chance. And that set of outcomes was called the sam sample space. And we want to focus on a specific type of experiment today. A common experiment involves selecting a subset of a given group, a smaller set of that group. And here are a couple of examples. Suppose that I have nine players in a baseball starting lineup, and I want to decide how many different batting orders I can make. From those nine people that are in the lineup, uh, I can choose to put any of those nine players batting first, any of the other eight players I could choose to bat second, and so forth. The question is simply, how many of those options do I have? Here's another example. Suppose a restaurant offers eight different side dishes. The question being, how many ways can a customer order three side dishes with her meal? If there are eight options there, how many different sets of three choices can a customer make? So to determine the size of the sample space in scenarios like these, where we're choosing a subset of some given set, we need to use either permutations or combinations. Now, the notations we use for these two concepts are right here. For permutations, we're going to use this notation N, P, R. Uh, N permutations, uh, choosing this many from the set of n. From a set of this many objects, choose this many of them, and here's the key important phrase here, in a specific order. If the order in which I'm choosing that set of r from the set of n matters, then I need to use the permutations. Similarly, but importantly different, combinations in cr Given this many objects, if I'm choosing this many, where the order does not matter. If the order in which I choose them doesn't change the outcome, then I don't want to use permutations, I want to use combinations. So it's going to be important to think about as you work the problems today, does the order in which I choose the objects from this set of n objects matter? If the order matters, I need to use permutations. If the order does not matter, I need to use combinations. Okay, I'd like to take a second to show you how the link that you see in the assignment page for today's instruction works. If you follow this link on calculator.net, it will calculate permutations and combinations for you. And all you simply must do for each scenario is type in the total number in the set n that we're choosing from, how many from that set we're going to create in our subset r, and then hit calculate. And what it will spit out for you is both that specific n pr, you know, six permutations where we're choosing two of those, which is 30, and n cr, six choose two, six combinations. Uh, with, with two in this set that's taken. So what you'll need to decide after you calculate that is which of those numbers is the one that you need. And of course, if you have trouble working that link, I know that you'll reach out to me either via email or on Remind or some other way to, to get that assistance you need. Let's try to work an example problem. The problem says a photographer has framed 15 photos and needs to select 10 for a gallery show. How many ways can the photographer arrange the photographs for a show? Ultimately, I need to decide, does the order in which the choices are made matter? The key clue for me that the order probably matters here is that the question says, how many ways can the photographer arrange the photographs? If you think about installing you know, a set of photographs for a display, I guess you could say ultimately that it's a different selection if you choose one photograph to be in the first spot compared to maybe being in the fourth spot or the last spot. So I think I'm going to say in this one the order matters. 
I could see you debating that, possibly. So, now since the order matters, I need to use permutations. Permutations, the order matters. So what am I actually going to calculate? Well, there are 15 photos. I'm going to choose 10 of them. I need to calculate this value 15p10. So I just got my number from that calculator site. I cannot believe how many are there. That's a lot of choices. 10 billion 897 million 286,400. That's a lot of decisions to make for that photographer. Here's another example. How many ways are there to choose five cards from a standard deck of 52 playing cards? I used to know this one quite well when I played more poker in my younger days. I want to think about choosing those five cards, and in a card game like poker, or just in, in any kind of five card game, does the order in which I choose those cards matter? It's the same hand, whether if I've got a hand that includes the three of diamonds in it, it's the same hand whether I do the three of diamonds first or third or last or anywhere else. And the same is true for the other four cards too here. I think I'm going to say the order doesn't matter. And since the order I choose those cards in here doesn't matter, here's where I want to use combinations. So from a set of 52, I'm choosing 5. And I need to use my calculator to calculate 52C5. So we got 2,598,960. That's how many different five card hands there are in a standard deck. Thanks for watching.